Okay, for the second speaker, we have Miss Christian Tini Diwi Sugondo. She will be presenting her pr research on screening and intervention for dyslexia in D Indonesia, developing the Lexipal program. A little bit of uh, introduction for Miss uh, Christian Tini. She is a pedi pediatrician and also a chairwoman with the Dyslexia Association of Indonesia. And she has been working in the field of dyslexia with children with special needs for more than 10 years. She Having a dyslexic children of her own, it has actually encouraged her to work very hard to support um, dyslexic children in Indonesia. So she has conducted many symposiums and workshops for parents and teachers in Indonesia. So today she's with us here in Singapore to share her research on screening and intervention for dyslexia in Indonesia. Let's welcome Ms. Christiantini. Hello, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I'm Christian Tini Dewi from Dyslexia Association of Indonesia. And today I would love to share uh, an amazing computer application called Lexipal. Uh, and uh, allow me to uh, start by showing this interesting video. Maybe can help. Enjoy. Thank you. So uh, we can see that uh, the children love that uh, application. And um, so um, it's uh, very interesting on how we started to think about uh, making this application. So Dyslexia Association of Indonesia collaborated with uh, Nextin Company. It's an IT-based uh, company. Uh, we uh, try to make one um, computerized of a screening and intervention application that can be used widely and easily by uh, as many as uh, Indonesian dyslexic children, but yet it has to be uh, fun and attractive as well. And we focus more on uh, preschool dyslexic children as we agree that uh, early screening and intervention would lead to better outcome. So um, I think all of you here mostly are quite familiar with Indonesia, my country. It's a neighbor of Singapore. And the total population of uh, my country hits more than 250 million people now. So it's a very big uh, population. And it is reported that we have uh, more than 65 million children uh, below 15 years old of age. So it's also a huge number. It's approximately equal to Thailand's population. And since we don't have any official dyslexia prevalence study in Indonesia yet, so we assume that we also have the same 5 to 10% uh, prevalence of dyslexia. So it's uh, approximately 4 to 7 million uh, people in Indonesia are dyslexic children. So it's also a huge number. You can imagine that it's equal to all Singapore population. 
<laughs> right? So yeah, so it's a, yeah, it's such a big number, right? But unfortunately, dyslexia is not something too popular in my country, right? So uh, there's a wide uh, understanding level, a wide gap of understanding level among professionals, even among doctors, pediatricians, uh, because uh, uh, most of us are pediatricians from Bandung. Uh, and also among teachers, educators, parents, even the policy makers, they, they just don't know dyslexia <laughs> was. So um, it, it would is easily explain why we still don't have any standardized tools, uh, not for screening nor for uh, intervention so far. So um, there you go. Um, Dyslexia Association of Indonesia collaborated with Nexin Company. We started to uh, create a one program that called Lexipal, that literally means the friends of dyslexic children. So it's a, a computerized uh, screening and intervention uh, tools that may be applied to uh, preschool children and develop in Bahasa Indonesia. Uh, so everything is uh, origin from uh, Indonesia. And uh, we try to make as friendly as possible, yet uh, it has to contain uh, any learning features and categories that needed for dyslexic children to learn. So it has uh, four main uh, features, uh, which is a children database. Uh, it's uh, where the, um, the ID of the child uh, are entered into the system. It's like uh, name, uh, gender, uh, you know, date of birth, etc., and also the picture of the child can be entered to the system. And then uh, the, the other feature is scheduling. So the user or the guidance uh, would arrange the learning schedule of the child. Uh, it can be customized personally. It can be correlated to the IEP, to the individualized education plan of the child, validated by professionals. And uh, also, it doesn't mean that um, it um, limit the flexibility of the learning schedule. And the other one is uh, learning media that uh, contains 12 categories, as we can see later. So those uh, categories uh, are specifically designed for specific needs of a child. Uh, and uh, every activity can be recorded in the histori historical record features. Uh, and all these uh, features uh, just need minimal initial training of the uh, adult guidance. So uh, this application is set not to be played or to be run solely by the child. It's not like a game in a computer that, that the child uh, can do independently. But this one is uh, something that has to be uh, some adult uh, nearby because they are uh, scheduling and supervising, things like that. So uh, this application also uh, has a most important approach for dyslexic. It's a multi-sensory method. So like uh, we all know that uh, this is the best way uh, for the children, dyslexic children to learn. So they are taught um, uh, you know, by involving all the various senses of the body, by uh, seeing, listening, hearing, touching. Uh, even they also uh, following some motion because uh, we have uh, like in the picture here and in the, in the video earlier, you saw that uh, there's a another device uh, beside the computer, well, what we call Kinect. Maybe some of you are familiar with that. So Kinect is a sensor. So the, chil the child will, will ask to uh, stand up in a certain distance from the Kinect, and the Kinect will sense the presence of the child, and the child will see himself in the screen. Right, so the child will be asked to jump and touch uh, one uh, one phoneme or one alphabet, something like that. So it's a really multi-sensory method, and also introducing uh, one material could be uh, with various um, uh, media, and also we really pay a lot of attention on how we embrace every single uh, progress that uh, the child uh, show in the learning activity. So we provide many stars and positive compliments uh, to uh, uh, to complement their achievement, and also we uh, provide um, opportunity to try again for any unsuccessful trials. So. Um, Based on uh, that criteria, we divide learning media features into three different types. So we have 
learning media, practice media, and evaluation. As we may all see here that uh, all uh, media are delivered in multi-sensory uh, approach. And in learning media means the child just uh, being introduced to the uh, first, uh, first stage of learning. So the necessity of the guide involvement is a compulsory because the guide uh, would need to uh, set up the difficulty level of the media, of the category, uh, in accordance to the ability level of the child itself. And then um, in every category, the guidance uh, would be informed uh, what kind of pre-requirement skill needed prior to uh, run the program. So maybe uh, in, this, uh, in one session, the child uh, needs to have the ability uh, to define colors or to count up to three, something like that. And also there would be uh, informed information about what kind of skill that the child would get after uh, taking uh, that practice. So in the practice media, the child may be, ab may be able to be partially guided because he already knows how to run the program. All he needs is practicing and therefore he gets scored for the, uh, for the result. And for the evaluation, after the child uh, underwent some practicing and get evaluated, then uh, this uh, session, the child would be set to do it independently and all will be scored. And this is quite interesting for them because they know at the end, usually they will get a printed certificate, a, a cute one uh, with the name and the picture of them, and then they can uh, put it in their wall. So it's uh, really interesting for them. And also, uh, it's interesting because uh, this application is uh, designed uh, in a game, a game design. You know, so uh, many in many cases, uh, many children they don't realize they they are now doing. Uh, Lesson session. <laughs> they just looking forward for Lexipol session because they they feel that it's a it's a reward session or it's a play session, things like that. Okay, and uh, in the learning media categories, as I mentioned before, uh, we have uh, actually twelve categories, but uh, we divide it into three groups. So the first group is a pre-reading pre skills, and the second group is uh, every skills that relate to specific difficulties of dyslexic children. And uh, also the uh, last one is reading schools, reading skills. Sorry, and for the um, basic skills uh, is uh, defining shapes and patterns, uh, defining similarities, differences, and comparison. And uh, for the uh, skills that related to the specific uh, learning difficulties, things like. Uh, practicing short-term memory, as uh, we heard in a morning session, that uh, many things beyond reading and writing in dyslexia, right? So we also uh, practicing short-term memory, object association, uh, and also uh, direction perception, uh, activity sequence, and then understanding places, time concepts, uh, and also functional skills means that the child is uh, taught uh, how to identify uh, social emotional status and also how to uh, to behave properly but it's all in a multi-sensory uh, multi-sensory uh, approach and for the reading skills we have uh, started from uh, letters phoneme grapheme and also syllables uh, words and the last level is uh, composing uh, simple sentences so why lexipal as i mentioned earlier that um, this is so fun, this is so attractive for children and uh, the way we uh, put the complementary is a kind of motivating uh, instrument for them and um, of course uh, we can customize the uh, difficulty level uh, of the uh, every media so it is suitable uh, for the children's ability and it's a multi-sensory method of course and uh, we can do our own schedule. So uh, we have Lexipal in um, two versions. Uh, the first version is professional version that can be used by professional like certified teachers or, or teachers or psychologists or doctors maybe. And the other one is for home version. Home version is something that can be uh, set at home. So uh, it's a very uh, flexible schedule that can be uh, set in this application. And of course we have a historical record. And on top of that, proudly I'm saying that this is a original <laughs> made from Indonesian uh, to 
Indonesian dyslexic children. So it's, it's very uh, difficult for us to mimic other language uh, because we don't have any other language than Indonesian and then Bahasa Indonesia. So we uh, already uh, tried to figure out something that we can pick up in the Persatuan Dyslexia Malaysia just in case anything that we can pick up. But uh, the spelling, the pronunciation and also the way the grammar uh, is uh, completely different. So we have to think uh, and work hard because uh, we kind of don't have any support from anybody. So um, let me share a brief story about Nextin Company. So it's a uh, basically it's a private IT-based company that is founded in 2013 by uh, a young man called uh, Muhammad Saputra, Muhammad Rizki Saputra, and it took about two years. Um, for us, for Dyslexia Association of Indonesia, collaborated with Nextin Company uh, to set up this application. And since 2015, we have uh, some recognition. Uh, we have recognition from the, my, our president, Mr. Jokowi, and also the recognition from Ministry of Education, Ministry of um, uh, Research and Technology, and also Ministry of Social Welfare. And just oh, one month ago, we have uh, awarded as a winner in digital creation category by uh, one private uh, TV station in Indonesia. And two weeks ago, Lexipal is also being presented in Asia Pacific Dys uh, Dyslexia Festival and Symposium in Yokohama, Japan. So, uh, closing my presentation, I would like to thank. Uh, Thank you for inviting me here, and thank uh, Professor Angel Fawcett and David Fawcett, who has been such a support for us. Thank you very much. And also, I would like to thank my family, who always support me, and of course, uh, thank all dyslexic children in Indonesia, who uh, teach me a lot uh, about dyslexia itself. Uh, and uh, all the parents from Dyslexia Parents Support Group of Indonesia, uh, who ded dedicated themselves not only for their own children, but for uh, the sake of uh, Indonesian dyslexic children. So thank you for listening. <laughs>